<laughs> Let's see if I can still work this setup. Welcome everyone. It's been a while. It's been a while. I suppose I should look into that camera. Oh geez, I'm just looking up here. A few faces up here already. I wish I could have seen them a lot earlier and in different times. Who we got? Stuart Carter, Richard Hatfield. Yeah, boys, I'm doing well. Cole Curtis, Jamie Bogart. Oh, I'm thinking of basketball. No, I'll be coming to see you for a loan if you were. Uh, Matt Capper, Mark Stoolson, Richard Hatfield again, Aaron Hewitt. Oh, it's a lot of body dynamite. Hunt, shoot off road. Paul Ayres, James Clements, Richard Hatfield, yeah, dear Hunter. Well, guys, all I can see is it's great to see you all back up here. I know it's been a little while. Uh, I'm hoping you can hear me. I hope I've got everything hooked up right. I'm pretty sure I have, but um, yeah, what, what can I say? Uh, Robbo's Tech Talk, episode 14, <laughs> Operation COVID. Um, and the funny thing is, I really don't want to talk too much about this, uh, the actual COVID side of it. I think we all know the scenario by now. Um, we all know that it's uh, something that doesn't come with uh, a rule book. And I think in the end, all we can do is just suck it up. Um, I see who was, I think it was Stuart up there saying that, no, Richard. Richard's had to, t it was going to take some long service leave, a bit of leave. We'll join the club, brother. Um, I had four or five weeks off. I still got three weeks off. Managed to get up the bush for one week, and then it just wasn't going to work. Um, so I've had to pull the pin. So again, I think we've just got to make the um, best out of a bad situation. So tonight, I really haven't got any one scenario that I want to put forward. I just want to touch base with everyone and basically talk about hunting. If we can't do it, we might as well talk about it. Um, talk about gear, whatever you feel like talking about. I haven't put any time limit on it tonight. Um, I'm still on holidays. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you can call it holiday. But yeah, like I said, we make the best out of things. That's what Australians do. I think um, the most important thing now is that we all all stick together, all band together. Um, yeah, hopefully it's going to be sooner rather than later that we'll be able to get back out and do what we love. But um, yeah, we'll find a way. It's as simple as that. But one thing I would like to to, to say is it, it's a big time that we all, not I've already said about supporting each other, but I think the businesses um, in the hunting and fishing and shooting industry obviously copped a bit of a low blow as far as I'm concerned. And uh, hopefully, that, again, that won't be for too long. But I think what we need to do, for, especially for those that are still working, got an income coming in and not getting hit too hard, because I know there's a lot of people that are, I think we need to look at supporting the local business um, and I, for one, uh, will do everything I can. And like I said, if you've got a bit of an income still coming in, just put a bit of money aside at the end of it or whatever. Go straight in. Get that business propped up straight again, straight away, straight again. Because I think it's we really need to sort of look after uh, look after Australia and Australians at the moment. So anyway, I'm just going to go quickly back through some of the comments, and then we'll we'll move on, guys. Oh, Matty Webb. I know Matty Webb's managed to get out a bit, but it's uh, but going to affect everyone eventually. Matty. <laughs> um, Paul. Yeah, I'm doing all right, Paul. Paul Ayres over in uh, South Australia there. James Clements. Hi, Robbo. G'day, mate. Looking fresh. Well, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Richard. Uh, what's for dinner? Deer Hunter. Well, I had leftover pizza, and our local pizza shop is pretty good, actually. So, um, yeah, it was a necessity. Uh, bit, of, bit of feedback coming through. Oh, okay. Oh, could be me talking to myself. All right, Ben. How, hi, how are you? Yeah, pretty good, Ben. All right. Uh, 
Richard Hatfield, Matty Webb, any videos pending? Well, I think Matty's on a bit of a winner with his new podcast. Caught up with him before this all got a little bit silly. And um, it's great to speak to someone that is so dedicated to what he loves doing. And, it, and literally, it is his way of life, him and his family. And um, yeah, it's it's like turning the clock back when you talk to Matty. He's just, he's just got a great aspect on life, very respectful, simple sort of outlook and something that I really appreciate. So yeah, again, if you haven't jumped onto Matty's new podcast, on, I think it's on Podbean. I think he's on a few other things. I haven't listened to his latest one, so sorry, Matt. I'll have to get on to that. But he's also, I guarantee you, he's going to get those videos start to come out too. I think he's got a bit of a backlog, but jump on his channel, put a bit of pressure on him, and I'm sure you'll get him coming out as soon as possible. Oh, geez, there's a few on here today, <laughs> guys. It's good to see. Uh, Tara Dowden. Hello. Good day, Tara. Uh, <laughs> Matty Kappa. It'll be crowded up the bush when it's over. Oh, well, I think so. But I think we also have to be very, really careful with this sort of virus. Um, that we, I think we need to keep our hygiene. I'm not going to go into this too much, but I think it's ch it's changed the way I look at hygiene and whatever. And, and that's really what, how we can slow it. And that's what it's about. We're not going to stop it until we get a, some sort of magic cure and hopefully they've got it sorted soon but i think the key is we just got to keep an eye on it because if we all just think it's all over and then rush out rush out again and forget all our basic distancing and all this i think it could take off again so it's something just to keep in mind for hopefully not too far away uh, angus opperman hey mate good day mate kn1000 yeah we're doing all right thanks mate preston marsh same book two weeks off canned it we're still working so might as well just keep grinding away yeah uh, well i know mate it's let's just look at it as an inconvenience because really we're lucky in comparison to some so melinda braithwaite go mel how are you oh yeah, i'm doing all right thank you adrian sharp uh hey mate joining in from the blue mountains well that's a lovely lovely location Reg Parker, I'm still buying ammo and parts. Flat out shooting currently, I feel for the non-professional shooters. Yeah, look, it's it's a different situation for a lot. I was up on a lot of the area we were in, it was private, and I could have stayed there, but the, the trouble is with a lot of, well, we've all hunting, and as much as we do it solo and whatever, I think some of the best time is the time spent at the end of the day and night with your family and your mates back at your camp and that just wasn't going to happen for me so uh yeah it was it was probably there's a few things that went on but in the end i just thought nah as much as i probably legally could have stayed up there it just wasn't worth it and like i said in the end um yeah suck it up maddie webb yeah private land maddie's got it all sorted so good on you matt Ah, oh, jeez, if you want to... Wombat Adventures. Hey, Robbo, ever hunted near Bright? Went there, not much around, recently 1080. Thoughts on 1080? Well, uh, to answer your first question, Bright, I know the area. Uh, hunt, haven't hunted directly in Bright, but hunted in areas around there, the Buckland or whatever. It does get hammered quite a bit, or, um, hound crews and whatever, but that's all part of it. 1080, well, I don't like any poisons. I know sometimes they're a necessity, and a lot of farmers still find they've got no other option in some stages, but I hate the stuff. I'd like to see it gone. Um, that's my personal opinion. I, I think New Zealand is a classic example of what's gone on with it over there, and uh, to be honest with you, I'd almost class it as sort of abuse of the, the substance. I'd I've got no time for it in big quantities. I don't, really, I've got no time for it at all. It's a shocking way for any animal to die. Tara Dowden, how are you? Thanks, Tara. I'm good. Um, Edward Johnston. G'day, Robbo. Opinion on a 270. I always say, guys, um, you've got to give me a little bit more than these open-ended questions because, yeah, 270 is a great calibre. 
depending on what your purpose is. Like if you're asking me whether a 270 is great for rabbit shooting or whatever, I'd say it's a bit of an overkill. If you're asking me whether 270 uh, is probably the hardest hitting caliber or rifle for Samba, I'd say no, it, it's, it's, it will suffice. So just, just, yeah, just try and keep your questions, guys, a little bit more specific so I can give you more exact answers. But Edward, it's great caliber, simple as that. Um, Rob, 14539, no feedback here. Thanks, mate. Yeah, just look, I put a bit of time into getting this mic and that set up, so hopefully it is good. Bradley Downing, hey, Rob, do you know why they let boggy, boggy season go on whilst we can go? <laughs> I'm not sure. If you're talking about hog deer season, I think that's all been ground to a halt now as well, mate. Uh, look, I'll stand corrected there, but I'm pretty sure it's all ground to a halt for the moment. Yeah, no problem, Matty. I'll have to catch up soon, mate. Um, Body by Dynamite 10. Nice. Didn't know about the podcast. Link, link it, please. Yeah, I'll have to try. But just type in... Um, um, Matt Webb Wild Harvest and Matty's on now so he might even put a link up to it but uh, yeah I, I think Wild Harvest again is one word so look on Podbean P-O-D-B-E-A-N as in the bean uh, Reg Parker no around Erica at the moment yeah I'm not sure I'd miss one thing and then I'd f struggle to catch up here guys oh hold on <laughs> Uh, Nathan Craig's on. C -c -c Matt Kappa. Matt Kappa, what do you think about the rush on gun stores? Uh, well, probably, I won't say as silly as a rush on toilet paper, but I think the only one that's actually said something in the political arena, uh, which was the most honest opinion on what happened there, was probably Pauline Hanson. Uh, and basically she said, well, look, there was notice of the Aussie dollar. Well, there was no, we all knew the Aussie dollar was dropping. There was notice that um, the prices were going to go up as in early April. Um, and there was also notice that no one knew what was going to happen with this lockdown or whatever they didn't know we were not going to be able to go hunting so and also we were coming up to a holiday period one of the most sort of sought after times of the year for the rut the raw whatever you want to call it over easter so yeah, it wasn't such a big rush i don't think well maybe in some shops but i think what probably exacerbated a bit was people having to keep separate segregated by one half meter so you got a line out in the street which normally wouldn't happen so to be honest with you the whole thing was a bit of a knee-jerk reaction in my opinion from the authorities and yeah it certainly didn't need to reflect harshly on um, licensed firearms holders as far as i'm concerned hunt shoot off road and not pangolin hunting anymore <laughs> Ben Hobbs, hey Robbo, first time on. Watch some great content you've put out. Inspirational. Jeez, you must be looking at a different channel, mate, for us newbies. Um, good on you, Ben. Good to see you here, mate. Um, yeah, look, I think uh, it's a big time at the moment. Like, obviously, we was, a lot of us been not been able to work. A lot of people have been put out of work. I think um, the old TVs, the computers, laptops, phones are going to get a little bit of a hammering with YouTube and whatever. So I think it's time again to support all, all the channels. So there's so many people that do it just in our local vicinity uh, in Victoria, let alone Australia. So support them all where, where you can. Um, and yeah, look, just I think we just try and keep all the positive, the positive vibes um to sort of get us through this as much as we can so and quick as we can and <laughs> richard had trying trying to get baby wipes for future we keep letting them send them away from our shores well mate i'll sell you some top dollar top dollar but um yeah it's a little bit like that in sanitizer i managed to because we always use the sanitizer in the small bottles after we've sort of gutted 
animals and whatnot. So it's just handy to do that, if, especially if you don't want to use your water. Excuse me, guys. Uh, Scott J. Just got back today from my first deer hunt. It was a great trip with mates from work. I ended up with a little spike of fallow. Well, Scott, I'm sure it's not going to be your last and I'm sure you're probably already starting to think uh, think again about planning it with your mates. And I guarantee um, these first times, you won't forget them in a hurry. I think you'll be hanging. I'm sure you'll be hanging to get out again, as we all are. But, yeah, I think the, the key now, I'm not going to repeat myself here, but is just to let's talk about it. Hey? We can't do it. Let's talk about it. All right, now I've got to be careful here. I don't miss anyone here. All right. Um, Scott Farrell, thanks for sharing some common sense, mate. It's very refreshing. Well, if we're getting to get some, if we're coming here to get common sense out of everywhere, we must be bloody hard up. So, thanks, mate. Good on you, Scott. William Bloody Parker, hello, hello to you too, mate. Oh, here we are, Luke. Here's another legend, Lukey Davis here. G'day, mate. How are you? Um, I've seen a couple of your little short vids. Um, you seem to be in a good little hot spot there with your, your fellow at the moment. And I just happen to know that uh, you might have caught up with uh, Matty of recent. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing these videos that uh, are going to start to appear, hopefully sooner than later. Uh, look out, am I in trouble, Kylie? Oh no, Kylie Hatfield, here I am missing the campfire and sleeping in the swag, listening to the frogs. <laughs> you sure that's a frog, Kylie? <laughs> Stuart Carter. Hey mate, I just bought a Tika in 7mm rem mag, same as yours. No, it can't be as good as my one. Come on. What weight projectiles have you tried? with the 9.5 twist. I've got some 150 barns load up for a test. Uh, all right, seven mil, I've got two. I've got the 26 inch barrel on the Rough Tech range. Uh, and that, cause I tend to load my prodigies to, you know, I like to get the best out of the cartridge. So I go for stiff brass as in Norma brass and just build up loads, so I'm getting the best out of that caliber. What's the point of having a magnum caliber if you're getting sub magnum speeds? So I found when I was pushing the 175 ELDX, um, the Rough Tech range, you had to slow them right down to get the best out of them. I just did not have any luck. That was with Reloader 22. The 162s in ELDX and the 168 Burger VLDs seem to be right on the money with the 7mm. I could push them. Again, we've reloaded 22, but it's, I don't know if things have changed, but I know there was an issue with transporting of reloader 22 or any of the alien powders coming through Queensland. So I'm not sure whether that's been resolved because basically all of a sudden, uh, you know, a few years back, it was basically re-released and it was become readily available and then all of a sudden it just dried up um, so yeah I've got enough I don't you don't tend to fire a lot of shots so I've got enough to get me by but yeah a bit of a shame if we can't get it um, in the future 150 grain barns loaded up for a test well I haven't look I, the only 150 grain barns that I've used has been in the 308 and I keep it uh, I think the key with barns is to make sure you've got the velocity, enough velocity to get it to open because don't treat it as a long range projectile. You'll be disappointed um, once you start to push it out a bit. Once the velocities drop, if you don't hit bone or go through something soft, it might just go through like a full metal jacket. But when they run hard and in normal hunting distances, sort of sub 400 yards with a good strong caliber, that 150 is going to be pretty potent. Bradley Downing. <laughs> it's a typo. Don't worry, mate. I'm the, I'm the typo king. Tom266. Hey, mate. Your new Z5 2.4 by 50 scope. Are you happy with it? The duplex reticle I saw was very thick. Um, that's a good pickup, Tom. I must admit the... The duplex reticle, because I had the three and a half to eighteen, which uh, has been moved on now. Uh, 
I did notice that the subtension on that looked a little a fraction finer, but the yeah, the 2.4 is definitely a little bit, and I would say maybe 5%, the, just from my eyes, 5% thicker, but it, it's still not too thick. It's not like the old, where Leopold used to do, hold on, I've got to correct myself here, Leopold used to do, and well, they probably still do, a normal duplex, and I think it was it was a fatter <laughs> duplex, and yeah, they were shocking, but uh, no, it's... It's fine, it, but it's a good pickup. They are slightly different in size. Uh, and definitely not too thick. Hunt shoot off road. Wasn't silly, they uh, shut down. Oh, so again, I, I'm not sure what that's related to. I probably missed it, but anyway. Um, e Mountain Biking Australia. Hey mate, Seiko S20, worth it or not? Um, well, that's a pretty open-ended question at this stage. Uh, I was lucky enough, um, I was down at Mar Maroka 30 a while back. Um, Rob and had one down there and I had a little bit of a look at it and I thought this is something completely new for Sarko. Seiko as I'd call it. But, and I was actually pleasantly surprised at the first impressions of it. There's some things that I would probably... And look, this again, I haven't even shot the thing, um, but it's different. There's some things, some of the positives that I would probably uh, look at. It, it's look, as much as the tapered dovetail for years was a great idea, I think it's a time to move away from that now with a sort of more the Picatinny rail and molding it into the top of the action um, is a really, really good idea. Uh, the bolt handle is a little bit longer, um, and you do notice that. It's definitely got that positive sort of intermediate lock in position. So in other words, in that half cock position. It's definitely quite a definite lock there, which I do like. Um, yeah, it's the trigger is different, as in it's got, it's fully adjustable, and it feels as crisp as crisp. But the first thing you're going to notice is it's got uh, a preload, or basically creep in the trigger, which is just a, a light spring pressure for three or four mil travel. I believe it's adjustable again, and then you'll feel it come to the point where it's like the heart, like what when you're shooting with a you know, bow trigger, you reach that wall, and then you've got to break that wall. And it, it felt good to me, but again, without shooting it on the target. But uh, you're yeah, speaking to Daz and Rob, um, they've shot it. Um, and they said it shoots like a laser. So, yeah, look, in time, I suppose I'll get my hands on it. But, uh, yeah, it's there's a couple of things that, oh, look, depending on calibre and depending on cartridge. See, for me, if I'm shooting uh, sort of smaller targets where I'm firing a lot of shots, I like to be able to top feed. I don't want to have to drop a magazine out in the back of the ute or on, on my bike at night or whatever and sort of muck around. I just want to just basically take bullets out, like push them in until they stop, and then I know I'm good to go again. And that's just the way I've shot with, when I'm firing a lot of shots, whether we're spotlighting or whatever. So for my smaller calibers, I really like that uh, top feed, like the 204, 223, 222. For the deer calibers... Um, where you virtually load up at the start of the day, and unless you've had a massive day, um, a normal box magazine is not going to concern you. But you will not be able to top feed the new S20, where you could the older Seikos. So that's one thing. I won't say it's a, a negative, but it's certainly different what the previous Sarkos had over Tikas, that you could top feed them. But it looks like the magazine system on the other side it's got plenty of length on it for those people that want to shoot the VLDs and stuff like that. So you can seat them right out. So, yeah, look, it's like anything. You've got to weigh up what is right for your purpose. But when you first look at it, it looks short in the length of pull. But when you actually throw it up to the shoulder, uh, the length of pull is, is, is... And the way the rifle feels um, is bloody good. The, the only thing, the, the only other thing that I would notice, when you look at it, you think, yeah, it looks like a light gun, but when you pick it up, but bear in mind, the one that I picked up, 
had a big scope on it. It did feel heavier than what it looked, but not disproportionate as in where the weight was. It actually felt quite good. So yeah, I'll be keen to see how it goes. Uh, I do like the options of being able to basically customize it to suit your uh, needs. And I'll, I'll like to see the other stock in the end because I, I really think, I actually think it's a good move for Sarko myself. All right, what do we got? Uh, O'Reilly's did, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder, I've heard all this. Yep, yep, yep. It's past history now. Uh, Bow by Dynamite 10. Yeah, I watched a Nioa stream that said prices would rise. PDA stopped the rush, so I agree it was a knee jerk. Yeah, look, that's the thing. Um, we all know that we just can't walk off the street and buy a firearm. Um, we have to go through all the processes which put a time frame in on it. So this was never really an issue, but look, that's all happened now. Hopefully it will only be for short term. We'll, we'll see. William Parker, should people be hunting while the virus is going on? Well, all I can say, and I've got to be very careful here because we have laws in place. We have rules in place. All you've got to do is make sure you know what the current rules are and follow them. And at this stage, I'd say, if in doubt, don't do it. Pretty simple. Because if I say, yeah, it's all right to go out and whatever now, people might watch this in two weeks. And hopefully we've gone back in these uh, in the progression of this virus and uh, got a bit of control in it and some of these pressures get relieved. But if it does go the other way, and the only reason I can see it going the other way now is people take their foot off, take the foot off the brake and say, oh, it's all good, let's go. So I think we have to take it very, very serious still at this stage. Nathan Craig, crazy to see gun stores close, hunting and fishing can't be done, but Bunnings is doing a roaring trade. Yes, yes, I know. It's Look, there's always going to be, like I said, there's no rule books here, uh, but um, as much as... I don't follow a lot of the political agendas and whatever. Overall, I think the Australian government has handled it pretty well. Yeah, we've probably made a few mistakes, all right, and probably made a lot of mistakes we don't know of. But like I said, no rule book here. Um, but as ScoMo said, be very careful. If we shut down the economy, trying to restart it could be just about impossible. So I think you've got to take some educated guesses here. Maybe some of them aren't right. But I think we just have to just work as best we can. And yeah, I know some things may not be ideal, but let's just pick the positives at the moment and try and uh, work forward. Because I think we concentrate on negatives. It's not going to get us anywhere. Drying up, guys. KN1000. Just hold on, I just want to make sure. Uh, hold on. I've lost it. There's a lot here. Hold on, hold me. Jeez, um, how many people? Sorry, guys, I've lost everyone now. Hold on, where are we up to? I don't want to miss anyone here. Uh, okay. KN1000. Thermal or night vision? What are your thoughts? Uh, well, I'm far from any expert on it, but I have been starting to keep my... Um, nose to the grindstone or nose to the ground sniffing out what's around and i can i can tell you that there's going to be some new players in the thermal market especially uh, well probably before the end of the year depending on what goes on i can tell you that zeiss Leica, and uh i believe steiner through beretta are going to be releasing some new thermals um, what's best for your situation? Well, oh, geez, I've got this itchy nose. <laughs> it must be, must be the the mustaki. Um, yeah, look, I think if you want to learn about thermals and night vision, jump on Nathan Stewart's um, channel now. <laughs> He's going to kill me here because. He's changed the name of it now. It was EDJMS. Now it'll come to me in a minute. <laughs> well, jump on Nathan, will you, for God's sake? Put the name of your channel up. But he is the expert. He is the expert on uh, thermal and night vision. And 
As far as night vision, from what I've seen so far, you don't want to spend a lot of money. The PARD stuff is well worth looking at, P-A-R-D. Um, just about everyone I know that's used it, say for sub 200 yards, have been very, very happy for the money they're paying. So yeah, do a bit of research on those. All right, uh, where are we now? Oh man, itchy, itchy nose. Uh, Husey, I'm here. Hey Robbo, what are your hunting plans once this is all over? Oh, I don't really care. I just, I just want to be getting out and doing it, mate. But um, depending on how the body holds up, I, look, we're gonna have to start looking at uh, filling the freezers because at the moment we're just withdrawing. We're not adding. We're not topping up. So yeah, it's it's definitely like all of us hopefully the bush won't get too crowded but I'm sure we can spread out there's enough for all Samba Slayer how are you mate yeah, he was lucky enough to just knock over a last minute fellow before he we, he's in the same situation as us so good to see you here son uh, a jolly offsider well we, we can't see each other at the moment it's the love affair is over <laughs> Uh, you'll just have to put up with me, mate. Tika 243. Got a 243 which favours the heavier pills. I shoot the 100 grain Hornady soft point interlocks. Hornady. As I'm a one gun man. Thoughts on using it on red deer, keeping in mind shot placement is king. All right. Um, 243. You'll have to check your legalities because I can't remember off the top of the head where you are. I think it's legal on Red Deer in New South, but I'll get corrected here. Um, yeah, the standard 243 off the top of my head has a 1 in 10 twist rate on the barrel, which many would say at the time was the mistake made with that rifle. Um, I personally don't think it is, but my long range 243. I did with a 1 in 12, just so I could use the more intermediate weight projectiles. Um, the 100 grain Hornady soft point interlocks are going to be fine. They're going to be have enough um, knockdown power, providing you put the shot in the right place, and depending on the size of the deer. Whether it's legal, just double check on that, because I always, I don't use the 243 on anything um, sort of over fallow uh, and then even I know the 243 if off the top of my head it's 80 grain uh, is a minimum in Victoria for fallow but I just don't know off the top of my head on red so double check on that but yeah if it's legal I, I think a well placed shot it would do the job no problem hunt shoot off road Thermal is easy to find the game. Yep, I would not dispute that at all. <laughs> Still can't. How, how much for a bolt action mug? That's it, mate. That's my only one. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I might have to get some more made up. I might as well swig while I'm here. Uh, Matty Webb, as far as I know, private and close to home, all good, yes. I think that's pretty much the same at this stage. And I say this stage keep up to date guys just uh, if in doubt ask the question by the powers to be uh, reg parker how are you going with getting all the stubby holder mugs and t-shirts and so on would love to buy one well i've actually i've actually got a few i'm going to give away tonight and i've just got to as i've said before uh, I'm going to say this. Look, part of this channel is to support the hunting community and the people I've met. And most of the people I've met have been bloody fantastic. And every now and then, um, I don't ask for anything really, but Swarovski have always looked after me. Swarovski Carl's, and I've got a Carl's hat to give away tonight. Now, the boys down at Maroka 30, does gave me a couple of hats. We go away. Now these are the guys, if you're a deer hunter and you want to support some local business, 
Like they're still open, the doors are still open. Uh, and even if they have to reduce hours, or hopefully they won't have to, I'm sure you can still jump online. So if you've got a bit of cash, support them. But yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't even thought about who I'm going to pick, but I've got three. I'll give a hat and a stubby holder to three people tonight. So I don't know. Give me your best, give me your reasons why I should chuck you one, <laughs> chuck a couple your way. But now nah, look, I'd love to give them all to everyone, but just don't have enough. But I, look, like I said, this channel's not about money it's just about getting everyone together sharing um a common passion basically uh game trail game trail films g'day steve how are you mate i'll have to catch up hanging out to catch up with the boys we've had to cancel our, our ada uh, meetings um we had a lot coming up and at the moment i won't say cancel we'll postpone them boys um yeah so yeah, g'day Steve. Uh, <laughs> same question. Um, oh, I don't know. I'll have to look into it. Uh, I don't. I don't look. I'm hopeless with this stuff. I don't really sort of promote it at all. But yeah, um, I just give everything away. Um, hunt shoot off road. I don't even drink coffee, but I want one too. <laughs> well, all right. We'll have to look into it. The Watcher. Long time no see. Welcome back. Just got my guns out of storage in New South Wales. Was scared government shut shops. <laughs> yeah, well, we're all probably, we don't know where this is all going to go, but hopefully common sense will prevail. But good to see you here, mate. Hadeep Uja. Hope I've said your name right, mate. Hey, mate, went out glassing a few rabbits. There was no, sh there was no shootable stags. They were all does. Any tips for finding the good stags? Um, no, but if anyone else has got some out there, they can tell me. Ah, look, mate, you've just, you just got to put in the time and do exactly what you've just done. Just sit, wait, be patient. Things don't just happen. Well, I won't say that because there's been some newbies over the times that have gone out and knocked over 30-inch Samba stags. But, um, yeah, look, just, it's, just understand, hunting is not about the end result. Well, if it is, I think you're doing it for the wrong purposes. I'm not saying you're doing that, but I think the key is, it's just to enjoy the whole lot. Just enjoy sitting out in the bush, get the binos out, talk to your mates, you know, and look, just take it all in. One of the reasons uh, I take the cameras with me now, because I just can't find anything to shoot. <laughs> nah, nah, look, it, it, I think the biggest way you really appreciate the end result is when you go through the time and hard effort to get there. Um, and that makes it worth more of a trophy, is just the effort that it takes you to get there, whether that's hiking in for 10, 20 Ks or carrying you know, 30, 40 kilos over your back. You'll be busted, you'll be burnt out, but it's all part of it. But then again, sometimes you get the easy ones. So, mate, there's no, there's no shortcut really in the end. And if there is, um, I don't think you'll appreciate the end result as much as when you've truly earned it. Uh, what have we got here? Uh, <laughs> yes, all right. Daz High Country, with the drought, the fires, and finally good widespread rains, and now COVID-19. The animals we all hunt will have a chance to breed up. That's a good thing. Yeah, look, I just come back, as I mentioned earlier, from an area that we sort of love to spend virtually a big part of autumn. And the river was just, because it was all burnt out when we were up there at Christmas. Myself and Lee were up there helping our mates up there and it was pretty devastating and quite scary at the time. But to see it now, it's all the grass has greened up and whatever, but there's look i may even put some videos up if i get if i can put something together the devastation was sort of hard to fathom and very heartbreaking in a lot of cases but it's part of australia you know we we, we do deal with it whether it needs to be as as fierce as it was well yeah i don't think it needed to have been and it could have been avoided in some scenarios but uh yeah look yes things will sort of pick up but 
one thing I would suggest, once we all get back out in here, especially the fire affected areas, guys, just just keep it in the back of your mind. Um, you're going into those areas, just have a good look at the numbers, what sort of, whether you're seeing more hinds and stags, whether they're, give them a chance to catch up. Um, because to be honest with you, some of these areas at the moment, it, it could be very easy targets. Um, so yeah, I, I'd take what you need, don't be greedy, and yeah, let's just control the numbers uh, and sit back, get the binos out and glass a fair bit more than just be, uh, don't be in so much of a hurry to maybe shoot the first deer you see. Uh, in other areas that haven't been affected, business as usual as far as I'm concerned, but yeah, just some of those fire affected areas, guys, you, you, I think we need to treat it quite differently for the next year or so, at least. Chris, go, Chris Koss, 28. Hey Rob, what do you recommend in a night monocular 2K or less? Uh, well, I take it you're talking thermal. And again, I'm probably not the best person for this. Um, but yeah, look, Pulsar is probably one of the the big brands at the moment, but there's a lot of others coming into it. So I would sort of hold off a little while. 2K might be a little bit below what you're going to get as far as a decent one. I think you're going to be looking at more 3K to get something that's half decent from what I've seen. But at this stage, I just hold off a little bit, mate. Hunt, shoot, off road. The panic buying at gun shops wasn't silly as they now <laughs> shut. Yeah, but so is hunting. So, yeah, look, it, I don't. Th in some areas, it may have been, yeah, really a bit over the top. But other areas, the queues just made it look worse than it was. I think. All right, let's see if I can scroll down without moving up too far here. Right. Nick John, hey mate, purchasing my first deer rifle, 308 Remington synthetic with loophole 9 by 42 I take it you mean a 3 to 9 by 42 um, from a mate for $800. All in great, Nick. What's your thoughts on this for a deer rifle and price? Um... I don't know, but I think I know someone that's selling that exact rig. Yeah, look, it seems reasonable. Um, look, depending on what era, uh, Remington. Remington had a bad batch there for a while, um, or bad, yeah. But look, they were trying to build rifles for for a price. Some of them it was a bit hit and miss. But look, overall, uh, some of the older Remingtons were really good. Um, I haven't had a lot to do with the newer ones, so I can't give you an exact idea there. But for $800 for that overall package, it's certainly going to be a caliber that's going to do the job, providing, again, you say for deer, uh, it'll do the job, no problem on fallow and reds. Samba, the 308, is bullet selection, shot placement. But uh, yeah, for that sort of money, it doesn't sound a bad investment. That's without looking at it, obviously, the condition of it. Darren William Sweeney. G'day Robbo, New South Wales hunting finishes at midnight tonight unless you own land. Yeah, I know mate, we've just got to suck it up. Look, I know it's tough, but we just got to suck it up. Christian Hackle. What grain would you recommend for a 3006 hunting samba deer? 180. If you want a basic 3006 round that just works, and you want to stick with factory ammo, factory ammo that you can just get, stick with 180 grain core locked. Um, a lot of the guys actually uh, that I know are actually uh, using some of the Sarko ammunition. Um, I think it's a hammerhead. I haven't used it myself. Uh, I think Daz uses it in his 7mm and he's been pretty happy with it. So that might be worth looking at as well. Bob Bingo. Hi there. Shot my first hog deer in February this year. Was wondering if you know any taxidermist that would be able to stuff it for me. <laughs> it might be pretty stuffed if it's still hanging around now. Um, it's, a, it's a personal thing, really. It's something that I don't get into. Um, what I would probably do is 
give give Daz a call down at Maroka 30. He's had a fair bit to do with a few local guys. I don't know, depending on where you are too. Um, but there's a lot of good taxidermists around. I'm, I don't, look, to be honest with you, I have never, ever got a deer taxidermist. Never, ever. Um, not to say it's a bad thing or a good thing. It's just that I haven't worried about it. So I can't really give you um, an accurate answer. But yeah, look, there's definitely some good local taxidermists around, depending on where you are. But give Daz a ring down at Maroka 30. I'm sure he'll probably point you in the right direction. Uh, ben Hobbs worked up a good load in my 708 with 150 grain ELDX that works a treat on fellow. Want to try a heavier pill for Samba out a bit further? Any recommendations? Well, you could try the 162s. Whether the little 708's going to push it hard enough? Um, I, I don't think the 150s would be out of the equation there. Uh, again, depending on shop placement. Just remember with the ELDX, uh, they're sort of more orientated around the long range. In other words, when they're running real hard, they can sort of be a little bit more explosive. Uh, at longer ranges, they tend to petal open better and sort of penetrate quite well. So, look, I think just shot placement with the 708 is the key. No different to the 308 on the Samba. So, yeah, look... I tend to, if I've, maybe as I get older, I tend to just, I'll pass up shots most cases if I don't think I can put a good, in other words, I can't place my shot where I want it. And usually, at those closer distances and whatever, I, I'll tend to go through uh, the neck just in front of the shoulder with the smaller calibers. It seems to just about drop them on the spot, but you have to pinpoint your shot. And if, you, if you're not confident, we'll just go back to the standard shot and uh, just pick pick your distances. Cole Curtis, Robert, how did you how did your charity, for want of a better word, unwanted equipment go? Um, if we're talking about hunter assist, yeah, it was something like usual. I come up with these ideas. Sometimes I think them through. Sometimes I don't. The whole idea of hunter assist is exactly what it's still to this day. It's a portal. It's not for me to be monitoring it or any of the admin guys all the time. It'll only work if everyone makes it work. So the key is there that it is exactly that. It's just a portal for you to put it up, put your stuff up on there um, and basically see if anyone's interested or whatever. Because what was happening was a lot of people wanted to send me stuff to forward on to people and it was just getting, it was lovely gestures, but it was just going to get out of hand. So I've sort of taken a back seat from it. It's still there and people can just put anything on there whenever they want, but it's not gonna be something that I'm gonna sort of push towards individuals to use it. It's there, again, if we want to use it or people see that it's there, Hunter Assist on Facebook, you can put stuff up there. I know a lot of stuff has been rehomed and the whole idea is to to keep it sort of under the radar and but I think the biggest issue that we probably face with the whole thing is Aussies are a very proud people and they don't like to ask for help so as much as it's there I, I think a lot of people don't want to ask and I, I can understand that so that would probably be its limitation but other than that it's still there it's not going anywhere uh, Matt Kappa, love my Seiko L591 in 3006, can top feed and load to the lands. My new 300A7 has mag restrictions and can't load my burgers long. Yeah, that's fine. But what I don't understand sometimes when people say, oh, I can't load to the lands. Well, do you need to? You mean a lot of rifles shoot well with having a fair jump. We all seem to get into, there's a lot of target shooting sort of influence coming back into hunting rifles, whether it be scope choices, whether it's been, you know, moving projectiles out to the lands. Look, yeah, the the choice of projectile that you're probably using there, the burgers, are got a very slow O-drive on them. And yes, I could understand it is an issue. Choose the projectile to suit the rifle. You don't have to shoot burgers. 
Uh, there's plenty of other projectiles that will chamber, feed in the mags and shoot probably better than most of us can. So I, I don't try and make issues, I don't look for issues that possibly aren't there. The Big TG, hey Rob, great to see you reaching out to everyone, awesome effort, good luck with the lockdown and stay safe as I need to, you to keep making your vids. Well, I had all intentions of the next four weeks making videos and whatever up in the bush and I actually started doing some um, and I'm, I've actually got a couple of the King's game cameras which I'm testing out and Matty Webb it's got one as well so I'm going to have a chat to him and see how they've gone and I've I've actually got them sitting out to my front yard at the moment seeing any um, uh, little shifty foxes are hanging around so I'm just going to do a little bit more testing I did have them away with me for a week but it wasn't enough to fully test them so I may put a video up on those soon um, but hunting obviously has come to a grinding halt um, but I'm sure, all like I said, look out for Matty Webb's channel. I'm sure he's got a bit of a backlog. No pressure, Matty, but I'm sure he's got a bit of a backlog. So, oh, I've got a combination. Rubby nose, itchy nose, and a new drink. Um, Bob Bingo. Hey, Robbo. Also just bought my first rifle last week, 375 Ruger. Planning to shoot kangaroos with it at, as pest control on my property. <laughs> Was wondering if you can recommend a scope. Well, 375 is a pretty big <laughs> roof shooting rig. Um, usually for those sort of things, you go back to your lower end, as in usually your two to sevens or lower. But that's usually because it's classed as a big game rifle. Your purpose? Oh, you've really thrown me there. 375 on ruse. Um, yeah, look, and obviously ruse has got to be done under permit. Only supposed to be headshot, so I don't think it's the right uh, combination to be honest with you, mate. But yeah, look, if you ask me what scope, I'd look just for that caliber. Um, yeah, I'd be looking at more of a, a smaller caliber. Ah, jeez, now I've really moved. <laughs> I've lost where we're up to. Ah, oh, jeez, there's heaps on here. Great to see, guys, but jeez, it's easy to miss a few here. So if I do, I'm very, very sorry. Let me just... Um, uh, I'm catching up a bit now. Uh, okay, Tom266. Which calibre for Samba do you prefer, 270 or 306? As I'm finding 7mm mag not popular with gun importers in Australia. Uh, I never knew that. I know plenty of people have got a 7mm rem mag out here and never had an issue. But which calibre for Samba? Well, the 30 has obviously got more punch than the 270, but the 270 is a little bit flatter shooting. So you need to look at your sort of overall circumstances. But to be honest with you, if you were to pick one out of those for normal, just average hunting situation for Samba, the 30 with 180 grain core locked or similar is going to do the job. Adrian Sharp, Robbo, I have a Howard 243 fitted with a basic scope. I'm starting to do more deer and pig distance shooting, approximately 100 to 200 yards. Are you able to suggest a decent scope for us? Uh, Howard 243, pigs. Look, again, it comes down to dollars you want to spend, but something in the sort of 2 to 10 range. Um, probably one of my favourite scopes in that area is the 3 to 10 by 42 Z3. Great little scope if you need the clarity. If you want to go something cheaper, well, the loopholes um, have always been, they've got a great warranty. Not my first choice. Um, yeah, but, and then probably the Zeiss Conquest as well. But probably something in the, yeah, 2 to 7, 3 to 9, or 2 to 10 range would be what I would suggest. Um, yeah. And depends how much it's going to get knocked around, how much you want to invest in it. All right, let's see if I can scroll down without losing it. Richard Hatfield. Hi, Bob Bingo. <laughs> I love that name. Did the shot owner talk to you about the rifle to Rue Cull? Take it back. Two to three. Yeah, I think the 375 might be a little bit of an overkill. Actually, it's a lot of an overkill. 
Hunt, shoot, off road. The corona itch. Yeah, oh, mate, I've got it. I've got it all over. I tell you, I'm not supposed to be touching my face. <laughs> With this face, how can you not touch it? All right. Edge of the outback. There we go, mate. So if you want to learn about thermals, thermals, night vision, what's the best value, the ins and outs, get on to Nathan at Edge of the Outback on YouTube. He is the man. So anytime I look at any gear, he's the one I speak to. So yeah, and he has got some of the pard gear and loves it. Very good value for money. Cookie duster irritating the beak. That's what it is, mate. I think it's just... Uh, uh. <laughs> edge of the Outback. Exactly. Nathan Stewart equals Edge of the Outback. Top bloke. Uh, nice channel. Thanks, mate. Gay trails. Um, yeah, Steve's hit it here. For Pard, speak to Paul uh, at Spectra Tactical or Neil. Both top people. And... Um, the Watcher. Hey Robbo, just wondering at what age would you think be good to start teaching children to shoot? Well, legally, they can't get the junior's license in Vic. I think it's until 12. Uh, other than that, I would double check the current laws, but I personally don't have any issue with it, um, providing it's done in a safe manner but check your laws it's not for me to start talking about what the rules are for different states whatever 12 years old is or was the legal time that a junior you can get a junior permit which allows anyone that's 12 years old or older to shoot under direct supervision of a full licensed firearms holder so basically it's a learner's permit for them but either way it's a great pastime if it's done in the right, with the right methods and the right conditions. The other option is if you're near the range. I know the double S double A range down at uh, Springvale. Um, you can go down there and pay a quantity of money. I think it might be fifty bucks or whatever, and they'll have the range officers there. You don't have to have a license. Again, double check with them. Contact them. And they will set you up and give you full instruction. And I'm not sure whether it's age restricted, but again, give them a call. Springvale Double S Double A Range. Probably shut at the moment. Um, Dustin Holmes. G'day, Robbo. Sorry I'm late. Better late than never. Very true, mate. But don't do it again. No. Good to see you, Dustin. Uh, Devarch and Gaming. What is your. <laughs> what, what is your. What? I don't know. Aaron Hewitt, release the coffee cups for sale. I'll take four. Shit. The only trouble with coffee cups, what I've made, the, the trouble is, is transporting them, you know, like getting them shipped. The breakage is the issue. But yeah, I might look into it. Yeah. Uh, you need a hat. Oh, well. All right. Um, I might have to contact people after this. Um, so stay tuned on my facebook or whatever i'm going to go through the comments probably at the end will be the go if i can if i if i don't edit them and lose them and then i'm going to pick three people and i'll send send you off uh, a hat and a stubby holder all right um what have we got clint more all right thoughts on boar snakes do you use them um yeah, look, the genuine Hoppies boar snakes, uh, the funny thing is I actually just bought one on the way home for Bluey's at uh, Wodonga. Uh, they had them on special, and I bought an, another one for me, 243. Uh, I, I don't think they're... They're not something that I clean my rifle with all the time, but there's something like... Uh, what I've found, especially on the 17 HMR, it, it tends to powder foul quite badly. And I found, once it does powder foul the groups start to open up quite quickly. So I find that I used to carry the 17, um, yeah, and basically just drop it down um, from the action, pull it out of the muzzle every probably 30 or 40 rounds. Just had it in my pocket. So it's handy in those situations. Or or if you're sort of in a situation where you're thinking, oh, geez, so I get a bit of crud down that barrel and you're deer hunting. At the end of the day, a little bit of a little tin of WD-40, a little bit of spray down the barrel, drop that, pull it through. It just gives you peace of mind, 
You know, won't be the first time that uh, inside of a barrel has got a bit of corrosion or a bit of dirt in there that you obviously hasn't done the rifling any good. Uh, Scott J, I got my first deer last weekend and would uh, would love a gift from you, Robert. <laughs> well, congratulations, Scotty J. Uh, good on you. Uh, Jimmy Robbo. Hey, Rob. Hey, Bob. Spewing about the hunting ban was onto two mobs of Chittle in East Gippsland. One in the Nicholson and the another in Wentworth. Next year, maybe. Yeah, well, hopefully. Hopefully, you might be able to get out before then. But, yeah, it's probably, for that sort of thing, it may be next year. William Parker. I should win that hat because I just turned 12 and just got my gun license and my mum and dad teaching me to shoot. Well, William Parker... I'm going to write your name down right now because I think that 12 years old, it's your birthday, you need a hat. You need a hat. And you might have to give the old man or your mum the stubby holder or, or just drink your soft drink cans in it, mate. But you're number one. Good on you, Will. Mark Sturlson, give the hats and stubby holders to someone who has lost their job. I'm lucky to still have one. Yep. I can't, I can't agree more, mate. Right, we're still going strong here, guys. I hope I'm not boring you. Pete's Adventures. Farmers are still allowed to buy ammo, but no gun shops in my areas and can't drive to another area to buy ammo. A cap would make me happy for now while I chase the foxes off the sheep with no ammo. Uh, yeah, I think, um, now don't quote me here, but I know it's something Pauline Hansen talked about with the Farmers, when they got their licence, I think if it's stamped, this is in Queensland maybe, I don't know if it's the rest of the state, but if it's stamped PP, in other words, primary producer, they can get ammo. But if it's just RE or recreational, I think they're not getting it. And this is where the issues of a lot of farmers are finding. So, yeah, it was just an incorrect classification on their firearms licence. Uh, Richard Hadfield, Kylie, what have I done wrong now? Kylie Hatfield, here we have been helping an 85-year-old farm owner for 85 years now to cut wood so we can hunt on his property. Now we can't go due to this fire. So hopefully we can get back there soon. Yeah, I know. It's all these little subsidiary sort of things that happen with the whole lot that sort of affects more than others. Look out. What's your excuse, Coker? Late. <laughs> oh, come on. What's not that? Oh, we have been going an hour, but... So far, we seem to be going all right. Well, I'm going all right. I haven't burned out yet. Good to see you here, Robin. All uh, right, here we got Bradley Moore. G'day, mate. Glad to see you back. Well, at this stage, yeah, all happening. Try and keep us all, all together, all communicating, and all um, dealing with it as best we can. Matt Kappa. Got 11-year-old son practicing his fallow roar. I think he is hoping to tempt one into town from the Backyard in Melbourne. Well, actually, I forget who it was, but I noticed uh, one of the boys put up. Uh, he was doing his raw, and he bloody it was spot on. He had a bit of 32 mil flexible conduit, about oh, I think it was about 400 mil long, maybe shorter. And geez, he was doing it well. I was on Facebook something the other day, so yeah, a bit of 32 mil flexible conduit. Um, yeah, I was very impressed with what he was doing. Uh, Chris Murley, g'day. I don't have a set of binoculars. Do you have any ideas for a good set that won't cost a bajillion dollars? Have an opportunity to hunt deer with the madness is done. Uh, well, everyone's budget's different, but I can guarantee you, you with binoculars, realistically, you get what you pay for. But it's not the saying that you can't buy a good second hand pair. And what I would suggest is either 8x32, 10x42, 8x42, but in the best second-hand pair you can buy, Leica, Carl's, Swaro. Uh, you sh look, depending on which category of Leica and Carl's and Swaro, you're going to be looking at somewhere between $600 and $1,000, but that'll be money well spent if you can pick them up. Uh, other than that... Um, you sort of come back to the fray and I can tell you what will happen. You'll buy a cheap pair of binoculars, you'll keep them for a few years, you'll spend 500 bucks or whatever on them and then after that you'll go, these just don't cut the mustard. So really that $500 you've spent, you're not going to get back. Um, so you're probably better off you know, the old saying, buy once, cry once. Um, 
Clint Thompson. Redfields are pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Not going there. Michael Robson. Robinson, oh, my brother. How are you, Mick? <laughs> G'day, Robbo. We share the same nickname. Well, long time watcher, first time posting. Keen to give stalking a go when we get back up bush. Never done it before, so I'd love to rip one of those hats, mate. Well, you, if you're serious and you first up, you, you haven't been into it and whatever, well, I reckon... I reckon maybe this baby. I'm sure Rob and the boys would be happy to see this bouncing around the hat. So let me just ease. I should be able to remember that. So, all right, Art, let's write it down. Michael, Rob. So you, you're going to have to all give me your details. Um, you can send it through Messenger or whatever, or jump on Facebook and we'll get in contact. Oh, orange hat. All right. Right, take me up. Bob Bingo. Richard Hatch, I want something to pack a lot of punch. Gun shop owner said this pack biggest punch of leaf beers. <laughs> yep, but I think uh, you want to be careful uh, with that and ruse. That's what I'd be suggesting for more reasons than one. Uh, Tom266, mobile phone, GPS, what do you think and which brand? Garmin, Onyx, Hunt, whatever. Um... I think the key with any electronics if it comes to navigation don't just have one do not just have one do not rely on one they all work but when they fail they'll fail at the worst possible times so Garmin as far as GPS I think Garmin is still the best brand for GPS yes they have their shortcomings sometimes but overall the best which one you get is up to you uh, mobile phone again uh, what we've found with some of the mobile phones, uh, some of them, the later models, the GPS sensor work with, well whether you've got phone coverage or not. Others, the older ones, once you start to lose phone coverage, they didn't seem to work as well. So uh, I've got Mud Maps. I think Avenza is another app that a lot of people are using, and maybe a few people can chime in on their experiences because. Um, yeah, Mud Maps has been pretty good to me, but it's not cheap. I think it's still about a hundred bucks. So uh, anyway, Nicholas, hey Robbo, your camera quality is great. What are you using? A uh, variety of cameras, mate. Um, it depends on the scenario. Everything from Sony to Panasonic to Fuji. Um, yeah, it's uh, look. I could make a whole episode just talking about that. And realistically, look again. Um, the, the camera bodies are just exactly that. It's your glass, it's your lenses that make, um, yeah, give you the flexibility. It's as simple as that. And um, the better the glass, the better your, your quality usually. So, Dustin Holmes, have you had a chance to check out the new Zero Tech range? Heard they are performing so far. I've seen them advertised, haven't seen any in the flesh. So no, mate, I have not. Um, had any first-hand knowledge. PK Gold and Hunting. Great job, mate. I take the full beast out. Sick of seeing carcass left headless and just back straps and rear legs. Take it. Waste of meat and feeding dogs. Yeah, mate, look, I think it's the key for everyone. We'll try and take the whole animal where possible. Not always easy, though. Jeez. Oh, yeah, still, oh, hold on. I'm missing a bit behind me. Uh... Right, uh, Shannon Braslin, need one of the hats to lift my spirits. Had to cancel my trip. Gonna be driving the Mrs. Mad with YouTube vids. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just, I can't help you there, mate, as far as YouTube. Yeah, all right. Uh, Hunter13345. Hey, Robert, I put a stalk on a cockroach today. How'd you go? <laughs> You're undergunned? Yeah, I reckon there might be a few that I want to see video of it. Theo Karanikos, G'day. Theo, I use a Seiko Hammerhead 3006, 180 grain, ammo is great, it's the person using the ammo who's the problem, yeah we all suffer that mate, don't worry, but yeah I have heard it's pretty good. Matt Bass Strait, hi, new to Samba Deer, been trying the same area five times but I'm struggling on cross reference from Google Earth, what direction the actual hunting area is, e.g. 
north, east, south, west. Hope this makes sense. Um, yeah, look, a combination of things, trying to understand how to read maps, I find um, the easiest thing to do uh, is to set up your GPS, and this was what works for me. It's not to say it works for you or anyone else, but change it, your settings on your GPS to read UTM, uh, Universal Transverse Mercator. It's basically like a comparison to sort of the imperial system to the metric system. So your squares on your, so your top A maps usually designate one one kilometre or one square kilometre. The line, distance between the lines, depending on the scale, usually that's the standard on a proper topographical map. And you'll find it's easier to learn what they call Eastings and Northings. Once you do a little bit of Googling on it, uh, screenshot some of your Google um, images of where you want to go, because it always looks different when you're on the ground. Um, and that in itself can be disorientating. But my tip to you would be to give, yeah, just swap over your to UTMs, and I think you might find it a lot easier to sort of pinpoint uh, off a map or to be able to transfer from a map to a GPS. All right, Shushan McKenzie, listening all the way from the States. Well, geez, I hope you're in a safe, one of the safer parts in the States, because I know you're copping it pretty hard over there, but all the best to you, mate. Um, over here, we feed the whitetail hemp. Makes the stalk easier for the clients I take out. Also put onion power in my shells for a natural seasoning on the deal. <laughs> that sounds cool if it's true. I love that. <laughs> uh, it's great to see you here, though, mate. A long way away, but uh, this is the power of the internet, I suppose. Righto, I'll scroll down again. I'm up to Shunt. Uh, yeah, Hunt shoot off right yeah, 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 yeah. Ben White, Ian Humphreys is the best taxidermist located in Bright. Yeah, Ian, from what I heard, is fantastic, and I believe he's a gentleman as well. Not, not that the rest aren't, but it all comes down to how far you want to travel, where you're located. So, uh, Cohen McKenzie, hey Robber, how do you rate those soft luggage carriers on your DRZ? Uh, yeah, well, not not too well at the moment because I've been able to get out. But yeah, no, they've they've been good, mate. Actually, really good. I had to modify them a little bit um, to suit, but yeah, no, they're probably yeah the best I've seen at this stage. Just need to use it more now. Uh, David Bleethman, hi, mate. I would love to do a trip to Vic and meet up. I'm a mobile butcher and have a lot of sand. But a video of us making small goods would be great. Yeah, uh, look, my mate's a butcher as well, and when we do the sausages and that, his his help is just invaluable. Um, but the, the issue I think we've got to be careful with, it's, I, I know the laws are changing with meat processing and that, but we've just got to watch where we do it. You'd probably know more about it than me, but yeah, definitely, mate, keep in contact, and nothing is out of the equation, especially especially if you've got a mobile cool room, because then we can uh, stock up and... Geez, I, I tell you, at the moment, I would love to be able to shoot, go out and shoot, shoot a few deer, process them, and sort of donate a bit of the meat to the people that are doing it a bit tough, but we just can't get out and do it. Um, you know, I know the Kiwis are big on doing this, and I think it's great, and I think, you know, I wish we could do more of it, to be honest with you. Uh, Christian Hackle, thoughts on federal ammunition? Um, yeah, I've heard, look, again, I don't shoot a lot of factory ammo, but... I know they've got a few different versions, I know the Fusion or whatever, and I think it's, again, like anything, just finding what shoots well out of your rifle for starters, and then just making sure that the bullet construction, your choice of bullet construction is right for your target. But yeah, I have heard some um, pretty good information on the Federal. The the biggest issue you, you have with any factory ammo is variations between batches. Some don't vary that much at all, but others can, so... Yeah, just keep that in mind. That's one of the reasons I hand load. Uh, bad vibes forever. Club going up. Club going up one Tuesday. Uh, I'm not sure what uh, that's about, but either way, I'm sure you'll either explain or I'll let it go. Maddie Webb. 
We'll put a few films out this year, all going well. I'm sure you will, mate, and look forward to it. I know all of us are looking forward to it. No pressure, though. Theo Karanikos. I've got the Z3 4 to 12 by 50 BT. Awesome scope. It's one of my favourites. And in all fairness, I've got that on my 204. I had the 3.5 to 18 by 44 in the Z5, which I took off the other 7mm. I was going to put that on the 204. And in the end, mate, I just couldn't see why I took the little Z3 off. It's a great little scope. So, yeah, I 100% agree. So, excuse me, guys. Paul Clee, g'day from Cancoba, New South Wales. Lovely part of the world, mate. Wasn't that far away from it up there. Uh, the Murray, the Upper Murray's in pretty bad condition though at the moment. Um, yeah, which is a bit of, bit of a shame. Matt ha Kappa, hey mate, g'day Matt. Hello, here she is, Khadija. How are you? <laughs> Finally got the chance to be on here. Better late than never. Hope you're well. Yeah, I'm doing fine under the conditions, and I hope you're doing great as well, buddy. All right, let's move up now. All right, Theo. So I've noticed you have 49 likes and one dislike. Why would someone dislike this chat? Oh, mate, give him... Look, there's always going to be one. Just let him go. I think it's funny. <laughs> All right, Nomus. Well, Nomus. Hi, Robo. I bought the Chinese hunting pants you mentioned. Love them, warm and waterproof. Yeah, no, they've served me well. Actually, I've had a few years out of them now. They're still as good as I wish I bought a whole lot of them now because I can't find the link. Everyone asks where do I get them. Um, but eBay, I think, is your friend. Just look for the patches on the pants, on the knees. All right, Stuart Palmer. Keep these shows coming, Robbo. You bring common sense to hunting and gun ownership. Stuart Palmer, Adelaide, South Australia. Well, thanks, Stuart. I don't try. We don't try. We just do what we do. Uh, I think it's very easy to just be yourself. Um, yeah, if people don't like it, they don't have to watch. It's pretty simple. Overtax, still enjoy life. My son turning 12 in two months and I'm already studying for junior permit. Supervising and teaching your children properly and you will give them life skills and great memories forever. Mate, never a truer word said. And I think the key is when it comes to sort of getting to the stage where you're taking them out bush and with the firearms is to be honest with you in my opinion just make the firearms sort of only just a percentage of it just bush skills and being out with your mates and family sitting by the fire of a night walking down the creek whatever you know it's all big part of it the 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 next part is sort of the the responsibility of it i think it's a it's got to be shown to be a big responsibility without overwhelming the kids so yeah i'm sure you'll do a great job of it mate uh, what do we got here darren william sweeney lone star bores in the states oh mate uses thermos i'm not sure sorry darren darren i'm not up with what you're talking about here but uh I look out itchy nose again sammy james how are you buddy I see, finally made it. I've been busier than one-armed bricklayer in Baghdad. Well, yeah, they're pretty busy. They're pretty armless too. Uh, Matt Kappa, hey mate, I've just purchased a 204 Sarko with a varmint barrel 1 in 12 with the amount of projectile choice. How do you choose a weight and powder without burning a barrel out? Where to start? Very, very good question, Matt. Um, yeah, such a good question. I reckon you deserve a hat and a stubby holder. So, before I answer, I'm going to write, you'll have to contact me, mate, and let me know what your details. All right, um, 204. Obviously, I shoot it, not in a heavy barrel. It does tend to be pretty forgiving. But in saying this, my brother's Tika shot better than mine with factory ammo, uh, Hornady 32 and 40 grain, straight out of the box. Um, I've had a lot of people say in hand loading that the 40 grain VMAX has been one of the hardest projectiles to get shooting well. Other people have said to me they've had no issues. 
the best projectile I've found is obviously the, going to be the dearest. Just when I say best projectile, best for sort of rabbits, foxes, and that's the 39 grain Sierra Blitzking. But it's probably dearer than some of me Hornady's 7 mil projectiles. So other than that, the Berger little 32s were extremely accurate out of mine. And I found in the end, I think it's off the top of my head, just hold on, I think it's benchmark 8208. Yep, benchmark 8208 is was the bee's knees um, for me. So, and just work up your load. But uh, I'll just say, I'm shooting 27 grains. But uh, bottom line is, don't just start at that. I usually pump them up. So that's what's worked for me. So there you go. There's a little bit of a tip. All right, Paul McAuliffe. Thanks for the channel. As a new hunter, your video is a great way to gain knowledge. Well, mate, if we can at least give you a bit of entertainment, that's a start. If you can get a little bit of, from any one of the videos, well, we're glad to pass on that little bit of what we do. Uh, Edward Berryman. G'day, Robbo. Picked up a LA-102 in 243 recently and had a lot of issues with rounds jamming. Any tips? I've heard mixed reports about these rifles and I haven't haven't used one myself so I really can't give you um, yeah, any first-hand knowledge but um, my phone's when I, I've got to look at making sure I've got vocals and they can't use it well I put my phone on silent means that people are ringing and saying there was no audio or something stupid so <laughs> looks like it's going all right though at this stage um, sorry mate yeah look Get on to Aussie from Aussie Reviews. I think he's pretty much up in the know with that rifle because I know he's tested a few of them. So yeah, have a, send him a message and have a chat to him because off the top of my head, I don't have any, well, I don't have any first-hand knowledge. So yeah, rounds jamming. Doesn't sound good. Uh, Hamish Robertson on. <laughs> hey, mate. There is a big school of wild pigs out the back of Man's Beach decided to buy a recurve bow as me and my mates are going to ambush them. Planning to shoot the big daddy boar for a trade. Well, mate, if it's legal and you can do it legally at the moment, good luck to you. But just be careful. Make sure you're working within the laws. That's all I can say at the moment. Just remember, guys, we represent... It only takes one bad egg to drag us down. And we're all aware of this, so let's try and represent ourselves well, especially at the moment. Um... Right, Mark Duncan, Robbo, like your videos, thanks mate. Have you ever tried the Burris Eliminator 3? No, and no, no inclination to even look at them. Not my sort of thing. Um, I'm quite happy to have the separate range finder and a good quality optic. And I'm not saying that they're a bad thing, it's just that they're not my thing. Nomis, what are the difference pros and cons of a 7mm versus 308? If we're talking 7mm rem mag compared to a 308, um, massive difference. If we're talking 708 compared to a 308, not a lot of difference. But your 7mm will be a slicker pill for its weight because it's smaller in di diameter and longer in weight, which gives it a higher ballistic coefficient. So it's depending on what you want it for. Um, but yeah, in general, for the same weight pill, the 7 mil is going to be slicker through the air. In other words, that high BC will make it a bit more efficient. But there's bugger all in it, to be honest with you. Bradley Moore. Hi all. Make sure you get a good snake, bite snake as I cheap one and got it stuck and string broke. Yeah. I'm, oh no, Brad, but I, I think he's talking about gators, but anyway. Yeah, anyway, I'm sure he'll clear, clarify that. Uh, Scott J, what is your procedure for removing surface rust on a barrel? Mm, don't get it there in the first place. Um, actually, I'm not the expert in that. Do a bit of Googling on that because I have seen a few things come up of late, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But ideally, um, depends on the barrel. If it's stainless, and if I've got one here... Uh, which I won't have. Excuse me turning away, guys. When I'm looking for it, I can never find it. But the little green uh, Brillo pads, very fine ones, um, 
are quite good with a bit of auto soul or a little bit of WD-40. But just just remember, it can change the appearance. You might get rid of the rust, but then put a bright spot on it. So anyway, um, yeah, just do a bit of searching. That would be my suggestion, because I don't know 100%. Um, where are we up to? Um, Rob, 14, 204, 39 grains here at Blitz King. Awesome results. Yep, uh, probably say they're hands down uh, one of the best varmint projectiles for the 204. It <laughs> skipped up on me again. Oh, I mean, I can't believe how many people are on here. It's great to see. But, oh, no. Deut bag, here we go. What are you up to, Pete? <laughs> Good to see you back on Robo. Unfortunately, I'm in a meeting, so I'll have to catch up. No worries, mate. Hopefully, we can catch up face to face in not so distant future. Dustin Holmes, using some of the new lawn air intake foaming down my rifle barrel works a treat. Certainly does, mate. That, that, that little bit of a tip won't cost you anything. Maybe a cold beer when we ever catch up. Uh, Shane Von Harten. Mark Duncan, I have an Eliminator 3 on a Tika 300 Win Mag. I love it. Holds well and you can use it as a normal scope with no batteries. There you go. Reg Parker, thanks Robbo. My son William is over the moon with the hat and now my stubby holder. Cheers. Yeah, pleasure, mate. Uh, just get, get in contact with me. Just um, send me the details and we'll get it to you. Might take a little while at the moment because I'm in isolation. Dom Dogs, what have I missed? I don't know. I don't know what have you missed. It's up to everyone else to let you know. It mightn't be worth your while being here, but uh, look, it's good to see you here, mate. So hopefully you'll get something out of it. Rob14539. Robbo, have you ever heard of putting a patch with auto sole through your barrel, then followed by dry patches to polish it out for a really deep clean? Um, no, AutoSol is a good product. I've used it for polishing uh, trigger mechanisms. Uh, it is very good, but never used it for that, so I can't comment, mate. What, what Siri thinks? <laughs> Frank Peter, Chris Murley, bought Nikon Aculon 8 to 22 by 50. Very happy with them. Paid $200 at Michael Cameron stores. Well, now I've got to top up my water, and it is just water, guys. Nothing alcoholic tonight. Um, yeah, well, like I said, if it, if it works for you, look, in the end, let's just not overcomplicate things here. In the end, you've got a rifle. If it hits your target every time or close to every time, where you, it's working for you. You don't have to have the best of everything. It doesn't hurt to have it, but you don't have to have it. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So if that scope's working for you, mate, good luck to you. Aussie Kelpie, binoculars, I have used for a while are the Bushnell Fusion One Mile Arc with the laser rangefinder built in, they are good for a cheaper brand. There you go, bit of feedback, haven't seen them myself, didn't even know of those ones. Adventures of the Bushman, what's with the jumper? Is it cold down there, shorts and thong? Yeah mate, I tell you, it's turned, the weather has turned and this is a special, see, can you see that? Oh, if you're not a member of the ADA, jump on it. Jump on it. Um, yeah, mate, it's turned. I was up in the warm. I was in shorts a week ago. Come back. I'm in jumpers. Um, yeah, I'm up in the hill, so. Hunt, shoot, off-road. Bob Bingo. Let's see. What's his telling, Bob? Let's have a look here. Sometimes we don't let retailers do their job. Kangaroos are only two-legged rats. So <laughs> oh, I'm not getting into this one. Uh, Gracie Gunfire. UHF handheld comms. What brand do you think is best for quality? ICOM. I-C-O-M. Used a lot of radios over my time, and if I was to pick one brand, I would stick with ICOM. Paul Clee, Avenza maps are good and put your phone on airplane mode, saves heaps of battery. Very true, very true. Oh, look at what's Robin doing. He's, oh, he's talking to someone else here. That's good. He always gives me the dodgy questions. Makes me think too hard. Robin Coker, Tom266, I run the More to Explore app. Was out two weekends ago in State Forest, frigging private land. <laughs> Walking through the bush, 
I noticed an old fence laying on the ground. Check the app and spot on. Well, there you go. Um, and Robin gets out a bit, so if he reckons it's work, working for him, it's good enough for me. So I might have to give it a try myself. The trouble is, in the end, there's so many different things um, you could go out and buy. In the end, if you don't know how to work them, none of them are any good to you. So my suggestion is to get one, and once you've got it working for you, don't be in a hurry to change. So um, yeah, but if that one's working for Robin, it's a good chance, um, yeah, it should be half decent. Hunt Shoot Off-Road. Have you seen the New Zealand Great Squeak Hunt on Facebook? Nah, it's amazing. Guys shooting trapping mice and making deer hunt style videos and photos. <laughs> oh, I'll have to check that out. Shane Von Harten. Hold on. Let me just scroll up without losing you there, Shane. There's a free version of a Venza I use for hunting New South Wales forests. Good to know, mate. Theo Karanikos. Hey, Robbo, thanks for pronouncing my surname right. Oh, I always worry. You Greeks give me a challenge, but uh, I've got some mates that are uh, Greeks and they're the loveliest people and they cook good food. <laughs> um, thanks, mate. Kara, Kara Nikos. I've probably got it wrong now, have I? Mark 5 Fish. Hey, Robbo, for a new Vic Hunter, do you think it's worth putting game cameras out knowing getting back to check them is weeks apart as I don't live in the state? Do you use them? Well, you've timed it pretty well, mate, because I don't use them a lot. I probably should use them more. And I know they're one thing that's when you put them out, especially in public land. Look, most people do the right thing, but there's the odd bugger that thinks, oh, I'm going to um, souvenir that. So I don't like to try and um, put out something that's overly expensive. But stay tuned. I am trying these King's game cameras or trail cameras, and I may put a video together over the next month and see what I think of them. Um, so far, not bad value for money, but a lot of people have also told me that there's eBay have got the same thing as what Kings have got and they're cheaper. So I haven't researched that. But definitely, if they're worth having out there, um, definitely if you're going into a new area, they're going to tell no lies. If you put them in the right spot, if the deer are there, they're going to cross the path at some stage. All right, Peter Sam, P.T. Samuels. Hi, Robbo. When stalking in my number one spot the other day, I slipped on a rock and accidentally let off a stray projectile. Ooh. It snapped off a tree branch, which landed on a young stag. Bloody knocked it. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, well, mate, it's a good story. But if it's true, I don't know. It's not nice to hear someone, a rifle going off because it slipped over. Come on, buddy. Your safety um, scenario needs to be looked at there. Hello. Vasily Nikotenko. Hope I said it right, Vasily. Hello from Russia. I love your videos. All the best and take care. Well, you too, mate. Look after yourself over there. It's nice to see we have a little bit of reach. I know you guys are mad, keen, crazy hunters over there. And uh, you've got some serious locations as well. Maybe a little bit too much snow for my liking, but... Anyway, good on you, Vasily. Shane, Va Shane Van Horten, Von Horten. I use Federal Blue Box 130 grain in my 270 when using factory accurate and good brass. Mate, if it does the job, like I said, no need to change. Dustin Holmes, Edward Berryman. I got myself a Lithgow 243 myself. If closing the bolt slowly, savoring the smooth bolt, I will get the odd jam. Just close the bolt quickly and you should have no worries. Yeah, if that's a scenario, often what it can be is just the shape of the actual bullet or the projectile. Sometimes, especially the blunter end projectiles. I know on 22s it used to be an issue. Um, and often it's just a man, and often it's not the case for every shot. Uh, sometimes uh, your first round might chamber well and the last one might not but it might be the other way around. And that's often more of a magazine issue than actually a rifle issue. Edward Berryman. Uh, right, I cheers, Justin. Uh, Matt Cover. Well done, mate. Samba Matt, have you shot any deer with, over the Vizsla yet? Well, we probably would have. We probably would have if everything was going to plan. But... Uh, no, I don't think April's been in the scenario. Oh, Lee will probably correct me here, but I'd say no off the top of my head. 
Uh, right, we're getting near the end here, guys. We've been going for a while, so uh, I'm going to answer these last few questions, and then um, I don't know whether this is going to be weekly, fortnightly, but I'll probably try and do it a bit more often. Um, I really haven't got a lot of top. One of the reasons I go is some of the topics that was sort of asked of me to do, I really didn't know how to approach them. So, yeah, just to do it in a live feed like this. So maybe I'll have to put a bit more thought into it. Maybe you can put up a few more suggestions. Um, but, yeah, look, I'll try over this, at least the next few weeks, or hopefully it's only weeks, um, while this sort of bit of a lockdown is, try and, I think it's key that we all stay in touch with everyone. Um, if you know anyone that's doing it a bit tough or whatever, um, just just give them a ring. Um and hopefully we'll be through it as soon as possible. I'm just going to go through the last of these questions, unless any more pop up. Uh, Bradley Moore, typo is meant to be, say, boar snake. Don't buy cheap one. No, very true. The hoppies ones are the way to go. Uh, Bradley Downing, fine grade, wet and dry with shitloads of oil for surface rust. Yeah, again, uh, it depends whether we're talking stainless barrel too. Wouldn't want to do that in a blued barrel. Uh, Christian Hacker, what's the difference between soft point and a ballistic tip bullets? Uh, physically, they look, well, usually a soft point. Again, there's a lot of variations, but usually a soft point is more of a blunt, blunt end um, projectile. It's usually a lead tip where your um, ballistic tip bullets are basically designed to keep the weight back on the projectile and keep it more aerodynamic by having a plastic tip at the front. By keeping the weight back, the projectile becomes, it gets a higher ballistic coefficient. The plastic tip ends up being like a wedge that's designed to drive in and open that um, projectile up. A little bit of difference. One's probably usually a little bit more aerodynamic than the other, but both usually do the job quite well if you know what you're uh, shooting and put the bullet in the right spot. All uh, right, a few have popped up. Hold on, let me just check here. Uh, Mel Green, what's your opinion of the 308 Seiko A7? Seiko A7. Uh, there's a few different uh, A7s. Like, I'll be honest, I don't, I'm not a massive fan of the standard A7. Uh, and for the extra few dollars, I would probably buy the Rough Tech, whether you buy the Rough Tech Pro. Um, probably the Rough Tech Pro for a standard 308. Uh, very nice rifle. The stock is very, very good for what you pay. I'm not up with the exact prices on them at the moment. But, uh, yeah, I'd probably jump up myself. Otherwise, I'd just go back to the Tika. Um, that would be my opinion. But... So I'm going to throw something out of left field here, and I haven't had first-hand experience with them, but all the feedback I'm hearing, especially if you want a cheaper-end deer hunting rifle, the Sauer 100s apparently are very, very accurate. Um, very good value for money. And check out, get on to Sarah Wine, Sarah Wind, and just... Check it. I'm pretty sure she's been very happy with her rifle. Actually, to the point they might have two now. So, and she was always a Tika fan. So, yeah, it's another option as well. Stephen Papey. Hi, Robbo. How are you, Steve? Richard, how? how keep well, Robbo. See you next week, mate. Please. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Shane Van Harten. Nice chat, mate. Some interesting questions, informative answers. Thanks, Shane. Thanks, Robbo, from Chris Murley. No, Miss, does Mrs. Robbo go hunting? If she, What does she use? No, she doesn't go hunting, but she's my biggest support. She's a very forgiving person. She puts up with me, and we just celebrated our 29th wedding anniversary on Sunday. So I love her heaps, love her to death. Um, but no, she's not a hunter, but she knows how much it means to me. Uh, what are we going here? Oh, she's still going. Uh, brother, true bat cover. Do you have a Facebook page we can follow you on? Yeah, pretty easy. Just look up Bold Action Productions. It's there. Uh, the Hunting Trucky. G'day, mate. Another great to see you back. Another great video. Miss my Tuesday nights in the truck. Got to keep the beers flowing. <laughs> oh, mate, I'm sure you're parked up. Anyway, you look after yourself, mate. We'll catch up. 
Ozzy Kelpy, could you please put together a video of highlights from your videos over the years? It would be great to watch. Yeah, I've thought about that. Um, yeah, I may have to do it. <clears throat> I was thinking of doing a new intro. I've just got a lot of personal stuff as, as far as videos I still haven't caught up with and got back to doing. So it does take a lot of time. It does, I won't say effort, but it does take a lot of time to do all this. So, yeah, look, it's not out of the question, mate. Thanks, Stuart. Clint, uh, Clint Thompson. Thanks, mate. Pleasure. Uh, Dustin Holmes. What barrel life do you expect out of a 243 if shot slowly by a leading barrel coup? Look... <laughs> Barrel life is subjective to how tolerant you are on accuracy. If you're happy with a one inch group, well, the barrel is going to last longer than someone that's happy with a half an inch group. It really comes down to maintenance. And to be honest with you, a lot of the people that I see, and I'm not having a go here, but a lot of people I see that think they've cleaned their barrels correctly, are not cleaned at all. You know, to clean a barrel properly uh, is a difference from getting 2,000 rounds compared to maybe three to 4,000 rounds. And again, depends on how tolerant, what your tolerances are. But an average two, four, three, um, we'll probably get 3,000 rounds upwards. It depends, it depends. Throat erosion is the biggest thing on two, four, threes. Bob Bingo, absolutely love the live feed tonight, Robert. Heaps of valuable information, a few good stories. Have a laugh. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Bob. Pleasure, mate. Hamish Robertson and on. Hey, Rob, I agree with Bob Bingo. You want the biggest punch and biggest hole for <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Uh, blooper video. Uh, we've got some classics, but I can't put them up. The boys would kill me. <laughs> All right, guys. I think we're just about through to the end of it. So I'm going to say, hold on, Nathan's got one last one. Thanks for your time, mate. We all need to stay in touch during these slow times. Maybe you could run a tech talk on Mustax maintenance. Yeah, mine doesn't take much, much mustache, mustache maintenance. Maybe I should add some colour. What do you reckon, red? Get some red happening? <laughs> all right, guys, I'm going to sign off for now. Thanks again. Everyone, stick to the rules. I know it's a pain. Look after yourselves, look after your mates, and um, yeah, we'll see you next time.